Hey, what's up guys? My name is Richard and welcome to episode 49 of Game Programming. So today we're going to take a look at flipping sprites. Um, the last episode I asked you guys and you said that you wanted me to show you how to flip sprites, so we'll, do, we'll just deal with that now. Um, I'm not sure if we'll actually implement it into the game. There's no real point, like it's not going to speed anything up. We might as well, um, we'll see. You know what, we'll see. Um, let me just quickly open up my stiff. Okay, so, um, we've got this sprite as you guys know. Yeah, you guys know this. You guys know this. But I'll open it anyway. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. So, King Cherno, right over here. Whoops, don't want to ruin King Cherno. We've got, like, this sprite, which we really don't need, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to go one step further and just make it all nice. I think, yeah, alright. There we go. King Cherno just got deleted. Part of him did. Um, okay, I'll say that. Um, there's obviously a lot of ways to do this, but let's just deal with it the normal way. So, um, first off, you'll actually see that if I try and run this right now, what we're going to get is, uh, if we go, if we go, if we go left, we're actually just going to get this instead of, um, the King Jonas, right? But, um, that's all right. If we go into, um, let's just ignore that for a minute. Let's just try and flip this one. So we're, we're trying to flip this one to, the, to, to basically be, you know, like the other way around to face right, um, no, sorry, to face left. It's currently facing right, we want it to face left. So, if we come over here into our screen class, this is what the whole, like, this is what the whole, like, precept basically is here. Um, if we go into our screen class, we're actually already in our, in our screen class, um, we've got this thing right over here, we're rendering the player, right? That is the method that we're calling to actually render the player. Um, and this is all the code for it. Now, this, this cull, it's kind of hard to call, call, call. Anyway, this um, this variable, which stands for color, really, um, that variable, it uh, actually takes the sprite pixels, um, it takes the uh, appropriate location of the sprite pixels, and it actually, you know, in the end, if it's not pink, it actually renders them. Now, the thing is, um, the way that it sort of cycles through these pixels it, is it goes, you know, x, x, as you can see over here, it's equal to zero and it goes all the way up to 31, right? Just less than 32, 31. And the way that it does as it is it goes left to left to right. So it's, in other words, it's doing it from zero to 31. Now, what if we want to do it the other way around? What if we flip it? What if we say, you know what, instead of doing it that way, let's, let's do it in reverse order, right? Let's do the X pixels in reverse order. So instead of starting from the left and going to the right, it starts from the right and goes to the left. So let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to make a variable here called XS, and that's just going to uh, stand for X Sprite, okay? Um, and I'll just make that equal to X for now. Um, so if we actually just replace this with XS, and just for all intents and purposes, I'll make a YS variable as well. We'll just set that equal to Y for now. And we'll make this YS. <clears throat> Alright, cool. So now what I can do is actually instead of actually having X here, because right now it's just equal to X, and if we run this, we'll obviously get the same result that we always do. Now, what if I subtract 31, right? Or rather, not really subtracting 31, but subtract X from 31, right? Have a, have a think for a moment about what that does, okay? It's pretty cool. So, what I can do now is I'll open this up, and then, wow, look at that. We flipped our sprite. How does that work? Well, let's talk about that right now. First thing you need to realize is the actual value of this variable. So the reason it's 31, first of all, and not 32, is because as I mentioned, whoa, there we go. I don't know, I hit controls that it seemed to do, seemed to do something else. But um, okay, so why is it 31, not 32? It's 31 because of what I explained here, right? We start at zero and we get to when X is less than 32 and in other words, what that means is X actually goes up to 31, and then this condition is no longer, you know, can't go up to 32, because otherwise it, this condition wouldn't be true, right? So that's why it's 31, because it goes from 0 all the way up to 31, not from 1 to 32, that would be 32 values. It goes from 0, inclusive, to 31. So that's 32 values in all. That's the size of our sprite. That's why 31 is here. Now, minus X, what does that do? So basically, what that does, and the best way to probably show you guys is by doing it this way. Opening paint on that. So, 
We've currently got a sprite and I'm gonna just quickly make sure that we actually do have a sprite. So 32 by 32. One nice sprite. And um, we'll probably just, I don't know. Let's just, I'll just use this, this tool to sort of explain what I mean. Um, when we start over here, you, usually how we do sprites is we start at zero, right? Which is this, this like row right here. And then we sort of go on to, we sort of go into like onto one, that's one, right? Then we go into like two, and then we go into three, and we sort of keep going like that until we hit um, 31, which is right over here. That's how we read through sprites. Now what, what we're suggesting here is that instead of actually going zero, one, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 31, we actually start at 31 minus x. Now, what does that mean? That means that when, when x is equal to 0, the value is 31. So we actually start at 31. And then when, when x is 1, it's 31 minus 1. So it's 30. And so we go down a bit, right? And we keep doing that, you know, until we get down to zero again, which is when th when x is 31. So 31 minus 31 is zero, right? Does that make sense? So what we're doing essentially, I love saying that word as you guys know, um, is instead of going from this way to this way, this horrible low resolution, we're actually going from this way to this way. So we're just simply reversing it, literally. And that is how that works. Now, that works both ways. So what we can do is actually, um, if I figure out a good way to actually show this in paint.net. Apparently not. Yep, looks like I can't do that. Um, I was gonna, hmm. I was going to, here we go. Um, rotate 90 degrees, yay. Okay, so this is how it works for Y, right? We usually go from top to bottom, but what if we go from bottom to top, right? What if we do that? What if we, what if we hit up uh, 31 minus y. Now, if we do that, look at that. King Cherno's upside down, bro. How sick is that? So that's that's how we can do that. And obviously, we don't have to do this at all. We could just do it for one of the things, which is like that. So in other words, it's not flipping x anymore. But yeah, that's sort of how sprite flipping works. So it's um, it's pretty cool. It's very simple concept. It's really easy to implement. And now you guys are kind of going to decide how to pop it in, right? Because what we've done now is we've got like a permanent thing. We want to somehow control um, if we flip or not. So in other words, the way I usually do it is I usually make an integer called flip. You guys might be like, why is it an integer? Why is it not a Boolean? And the reason it's an integer, I like to have it as, as an integer is because um, we, can, we can obviously flip in what? There's four different states it can be on. Nothing flipped, X flipped, Y flipped, or both flipped. That's four different states. So if you really wanted to, right? This is up to you, of course. Like there's there's millions of ways to, they're probably not millions, but there's a lot of ways to do everything in programming. Um, which is why, you know, the way I'm doing it doesn't necessarily reflect the best way to do it. It's just how I want to do it. And it does work, obviously. Uh, you could make two booleans, one for X flip and Y flip. If they're both true, then, you know, flip both. If one of them's true, flip that one. If they're both false, then don't flip anything. But um, that's, I don't know, I don't really like that parameter too much. So um, I just have an integer called flip. And that seems to work out pretty well. So in other words, what I'll do here is I'll say that if, if flip is equal to one, sorry, two, then we'll flip Y or, sorry, or, um, flip is equal to three, which is both. So two, two equals, what is, what is wrong with this? Syntax error, why? Did I miss a bracket somewhere? If flip equals two or, what? Did I, I, did I miss a bracket somewhere? Huh, that was weird. Anyway, um, if, if flip equals two, so two is gonna equal flip y and three is gonna equal flip both, right? So in other words, if this statement is true for x, which is right over here, then, um, you know, if it's one, which is flip x, or if it's three, which is flip both, then yeah, flip it. But otherwise we'll just keep, you know, x, s and y, s as it's supposed to be. So in other words, what that means, right? What that means is, um, 
is, what does that mean? That means that uh, if flip is equal to zero, it's just gonna ignore both those things. Now, obviously we can't just simply do that. You can see X S and Y S aren't being declared here. And we can fix that pretty easily by simply making an integer up here, you know, called Y S set it equal to Y for now. And then if, if need be, we'll change it to that, right? Simple. That's usually how I handle flipping. But then again, that's just me. You can do it whatever way works for you. You don't even have to do it at all. Like the sprite that I provided with you guys that uh, Andy Wall made, that was, um, that was fine. So there we go. That's sort of how I roll. That's how Cherno rolls. So you don't, you can do it this way. It's good. It's a pretty good way to do it. I like to think, but, um, but yeah, anyway, so one more thing that we'll do quickly, it's going to be quite a long episode, but, um, one thing we can do quickly is when we're into play here, uh, the flip can really depend on a few things. So I like to make a variable here called flip. Uh, if direction equals, uh, three, we don't, we don't really have a player left anymore. So player side, I might change it to, right? So whoops, play it, change it to side. Um, and I just hit, I, uh, sorry, I did that by hitting, uh, alt shift R and that actually refactors it. Um, yep. Okay. There we go. Um, or you could just hit right click refactor and then rename and that'll actually re rename it everywhere. So if we actually go to the sprite class, you can see that, um, it renamed it here as well, player side. So we can delete player left now. Um, and simply over here, we'll say that if direction equals that or direction equals going left, which is that way, then we select that thing. And finally, one thing that we need to do is, uh, if, um, we can just put another one in here. So if direction equals three, then I'm just thinking, is that a good way? Yeah, it's not, it's not necessarily, no, that probably, probably kind of redundant. So we could just say here that if direction equals three, then, you know, flip equals, which one are we supposed to one? Yeah. Otherwise flip equals zero. So int flip equals zero. And we obviously won't need this then. I'm trying to think, yeah, that'll be fine, I guess. Just do it this way. All right, so let's test that out real quick. And um, there you go. So we have, we have awesome flipping. There is a bit of crown movement here because my crown is so big I can barely carry it. Um, but I would probably fix that up in paint.net. Did I already close? Yep, I already closed that one. Open with paint.net. And a common problem sometimes is that it's not exactly in the middle, but it, it does seem to be. I don't know if it will help. Um, yeah, okay, it looks like it's in the middle, so that'll be fine. Um, I'm not gonna bother with that now. But yeah, there's your little flipping, and we're using the same sprite for both sides. So yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit that like button and I'll see you guys, see you guys in episode 50. That's going to be a big episode. I can tell you that right now, actually. Well, big episode in the sense that it's a big number. Not really that it's going to be super long. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.